Welcome. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Good morning. Welcome back. How we doing? Buenos dias. Like the video. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. We're back, man. We're back and we've got opportunity. What a day on Friday, man. What a day. Hopefully you guys uh, were able to catch some of that. Some of that Friday action. That was uh, that was a sick day. That was free money. Free money Fridays. Might have to might have to coin it that free money Friday. Morning, everyone. Pulling up the economic stuff here real quick. All righty. Rangers, yeah, go Rangers, man. I put a lot of money on the Rangers. <laughs> Rangers was uh that was a free bet. No way the Rangers are losing game one in the garden to the Capitals. So yeah, I slammed I slammed the Rangers money line. That was nice. I also took a parlay last night for uh the Canucks and the Jets. That hit. Hockey I like I actually like but I like betting hockey. I think betting hockey is a little bit more predictable than than others. At times, of course. Sometimes it'll get you. Morning, guys. Welcome back. They should sweep. If they don't sweep, that's not that's that's a sign of weakness for the for the Rangers. That's the Capitals are. If you look at their stats, they are one of the worst. They are the worst team to get in the playoffs since like 19, I think they said like 1990 something. So, yeah, I mean, the Capitals got in by the skin of their teeth. They got in off of some crazy sort of tiebreaker things. There's no excuse for the Rangers not to sweep that series. If there's, if it's not, I'd be concerned about my Rangers if they don't sweep that series. But there's a lot of good teams in the in the league still after the Caps, of course. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Morning, guys. Welcome back. Playoff hockey. I love it. All right. So, um, well, we obviously know what happened Friday. Uh, it was, uh, it was a, uh, it was a, it was a bloody, it was a bloody day. It was definitely a bloody day. Big downside on semiconductors, SMCI, Nvidia. Some big stuff to the downside. Um, definitely more to watch here today. Uh, some levels that we need to be paying attention to for the bounce and rejection type move. Um, that is definitely what I'll be looking for throughout, you know, the start to this week is do we get these bounces and where do we start to see rejections? Um, where if we continue to get pre-market upside, then I would continue to look for that fade move. There might be one day that we get that downside pre-market, that would be the day I'm cautious of shorting, right? I like to see the pre-market upside. We've seen what's happened over the last few weeks when we get pre-market upside. Pre-market upside is not strong upside. So if we get pre-market upside, if we get gap ups in the morning, this is the type of move I want to be looking for for that fade move intraday. Uh, so that is exactly what we're doing today. So that's what I'm going to lo be looking for. We're getting a little bit of the upside in the pre-market into some major supply levels. And uh, we need to then, you know, intraday, watch to see what happens at these levels as they trade at them. A lot of earnings this week. A lot of earnings this week. Um, earnings, you got some stuff on the economic calendar. So some things in the way, right, on the intraday. We got to be careful of the swing trades this week. Probably not a week to be too heavy on the swings with all these earnings that are approaching, right? We could get sort of flips on the market uh, because of the earnings. So let's be careful of that. And then the last thing I want to say before we get into it, guys, is be careful of your expectations this week, okay? A lot of traders that are sort of, you know, sort of new or just sort of, you know, sort of horned up here because of Friday's move are going to be trying to anticipate another move like Friday. I would find it very 
unlikely. I I would be very surprised to see another down day like Friday. Okay, uh, that's a it's a major down day on the market. That is something that does not happen very often. Right, that was the first. I think that was the largest down day on Nvidia f- in a few years. Right, so. Be careful of approaching this week trying to catch a move like Friday, right? That was really a once-in-a-while opportunity to short the market. There obviously could still be weakness on the market and still short opportunities, but I don't think you're going to be seeing a you know a 10% downside on NVIDIA again, right? Uh, you might see a 2% downside, a 3% downside, uh, but a 10% downside on NVIDIA, that's once that's far and few, few and far between. Um, and so just be careful of your expectations, right? Don't come into the day, you know, trying to short NVIDIA for a 10% downside move. Um, it might happen, but I would say approach the week expecting that not to happen, right? That might save you from being a little bit too greedy on some downside plays, all right? That's something I would definitely pay attention to, right? Um, I mean, market still needs to bottom. I agree, Matt. I think there is still downside here on the market. I'm not saying this is the bottom of the market, but, you know, I don't think you're going to see another 10%, 20% downside in SMCI, right? Those That Friday move, don't let that Friday move sort of get you all greedy, right? Don't let it, don't let it try to, don't let it get you, you know, looking for those major, major moves because that could be dangerous. It could be very dangerous. I'm not saying, I'm not saying the market is bottom, okay? Don't take what I said out of context. What I'm saying is be careful expecting 10% downside days on NVIDIA. Uh, that is something that might be tough to find again, okay? All right. So let's get started. Uh, let's, start with the, uh, let's start with the economic calendar, and then we'll jump into the earnings calendar. Today on the economic, nothing. So that's pretty good to see. Nothing here. You guys can see I, don't, I got nothing on my side. Uh, April 22nd, nothing there. So nothing to really worry about on the economic. Tomorrow, 9.45, you got PMI. You got new home sales at 10. Uh, Wednesday, durable goods. So that's pretty light. The first you know, few days of this week, pretty light. Um, you got PMI, which is a decent one. Durable goods and home sales. Thursday, could be a little bit bigger, right? We got that GDP number. We got that normal unemployment claims number. Something to watch there. And then Friday, we got our PCE and our consumer sentiment. So nothing crazy on the economic um, you know, normal things, normal sort of economic, no, no CPIs, no PPIs, no FOMCs, no Jerome Powell. So nothing crazy, crazy like that. Um, but you know, a few things peppered in here, PMI, GDP, unemployment claims, home sales, and PCE and consumer sentiment. Some key ones that I'd be paying attention to. So today, nothing. Just be careful of tomorrow, 15 minutes after open PMI. All right. Our earnings calendar. So we're we're in the thick of it here, guys. We have entered the earnings season. Welcome to earnings season. Uh, it has started. So today, nothing I'm really focused on on the earnings side. I don't see anything too major over there. Tomorrow is where it really starts to heat up. Uh, in the pre-market, GM, UPS, GE, Pepsi, Lockheed Martin, Spotify, JetBlue, RTX. So some big ones there. Tesla, uh, Tuesday after close, we have that Tesla, that Visa, that Enphase. Um, starts to get a little heavier Wednesday, Boeing, AT&T, Meta, Ford, Chipotle, uh, and then after close on Thursday, you got a, probably the biggest day of the week right here, two sort of behemoths, Google and Microsoft, those are some big ones there, and then you end the week with, uh, some, some oil, some energy, Exxon, Chevron, and Abvi. So, a lot of earnings, um... I don't play earnings. It's not part of my strategy. It's not part of my game. You know, if you guys are going to play earnings, make sure you protect yourself. Don't don't think that you know exactly. Don't try to guess exactly what's going to happen. Make sure you remember that data decay or uh, the uh, IV crush that could occur. At this point, I think we should all be very aware of this. Um, So you guys know the the normal spiel here on earnings. I don't get involved, um, but could be some interesting ones to watch and see how they affect the market. That's more important to me. How do these earnings affect the market? That's what I look for, right? Do we start getting downside on some big tech names? And if we do, right, then we can look for the follow-through. So to keep an eye on that, right? Tesla is really where it kicks off here on Tuesday, tomorrow, after close. Tesla, Meta, Microsoft, Google. Those are the big ones of the week. All right? All right. With that said, 
let's jump into the levels. Press that like button if you guys could. 1,700 of you here. 376 likes. Ouch. I know it's early Monday. I know you're probably still sleeping, but it's time to wake up. Okay? Go ahead, wake up, and press that like button. All right. So, it's going to be a little bit messy for me to show you these levels because I got to go all the way back on the four-hour chart. So, it's going to get a little bit messy here. I'm going to try my best to show you where my mind is here this morning. But uh, I'm going to try to make this as clean as possible. But it's going to be a little bit difficult to read because I got to go back on the four-hour <clears throat> four chart to show you the levels that I'm watching. So, the first level that I'm watching is... It's right around right around here. I, I have it a little bit higher right now. It's right around this 17. It's right around 17,300. That's really where it is, right? You can see right here on the four-hour chart. So I'm going to zoom in here on the four-hour chart. This is January. Uh, this is the first week of January and then the last week of December, right? Right here. So you can see right here you have... 17,300, 17,300, 17,300, and a triple top at 17,300, okay? That's the first area I'm watching. So 17,300, you can see, was a major four-hour area back in January and December, right? So if we go over and we sort of scoot this chart all the way over to where we are now, look at what's happening at 17,300 as we speak, right? Look at how clean the rejections are coming in at our exact 17,300 level on the four-hour chart. So that is very clearly our first level to watch. Look at how clean what you're seeing right now as we speak. Look at what's occurring at 17,300. So that is my level today, right? Without a doubt, just witnessing that reaction in the pre-market right now, this is a beautiful short-side opportunity off that four-hour high right and i have to go this is why you got to make sure you go back right if we got it we got to go back on this chart we got to make sure we're looking to the left if we look to the left look at that 17.3 look at that 17.3 look at that 17.3 right so very nice 17.3 level that's popping up here in the short term so if we look at this four hour chart right what's next under 17.3 i would assume the market trades back to that 17,000. right this is the zone that I think you could trade in this week between 17.3, right? Next demand down at 17,000, right there. All right, so if we go over, let's go over to where we are now. If we stay under 17.3 17, today, right? We'll go back to the 15 minute chart. If we stay under 17.3 today, I would assume the market wants to try to fade potentially back to that 17,000 low, all right? Carlos, what are you what are you complaining about already, man? <laughs> Can't see. Wrong monitor. Uh, wake up, man. <laughs> All right. So, seventeen three. You can see right here. Very clear. Very nice rejection point on your screen. On your screen. Seventeen three. So that's number one. The downside target there, if we really get a real rejection, would be seventeen thousand. But obviously, there are more levels to be watching there before we get to seventeen thousand. So if I go down to the, uh, I'm going to go down to the five-minute chart here, and I'm going to show you some short-term levels to be watching uh, for potential holds on the intraday here. So number one, I think you're seeing a little bit of support step up around this 17.230, right? Right around this 17.230, I think there's a little bit of support to be paying attention to on the intraday, right? So right here, 17.230, you can see some holds here at 17.230. And you can see the 17,230 level that held here around 4 a.m. in the pre-market. So that's number one. Be a little bit careful down into that 17,230 demand on NASDAQ futures. Could hold that area in the short term. Under 17,230, I think you come into 17,2. Okay, 17,2, 17,2, and 17,2. Okay, so these are my two short-term downside demands that I'll be careful of if we are moving to the downside, 17.230 and 17.2. If we break under both of these, I believe you are looking, you know, for that aggressive downside once again. Maybe it's a little bit of support down here at 17.1 again, right? You have sort of that those that wick action. Um, 
Friday, you know, Friday, Friday end of day, you got a little bit of wick action at that 17100, which we could be careful of. Uh, but I would assume that if we break this 172, if we break below this 17230, then that selling pressure is going to start to really come in again. And we'll probably test that Friday low. And at that point, I would say we're probably coming down to test that 17,000 demand low. Okay? This is all valid if we stay under 17.3. All right? We have to stay under 17.3 for this sort of downside continuation to stay valid. If we get over 17.3, that is where I think you will move up to your next supply, which in my eyes is right here at 17.400. Now, why 17,400? If I go out to the four-hour chart, there's a reason for it. Uh, let me zoom out. And that is this high right here. We got to go back on the four-hour chart. We got to go all the way back. The reason for that is right here, right? You can see 17,400, 17,415 is that high right there from the end of December, December of 2023, right? Last year. So you can see that high right there. That's 17,415, Okay. And then if we go into the into, if we go into the 15 minute chart and we go into the short term price action, right, we can see that 17,415 had an influence on Friday uh, intraday, right? Look at this. You had this low, and then you had that flip short right at 17,415. So those are my two levels, right? If we go above 17,3, I'll look for 17,415. Of course, over 415, I'll look for that 550, which is very clearly Friday highs. If we stay under 17.3, I think the weakness stays very, you know, very much in today. Okay, under 17.3, I think you stay weak. Just got to be careful of some of these short-term demands at 17.230 and 17.200. All right, that's the read that I have right now on the Nasdaq futures. So my first short entry today is going to be watching 17.3. If we get above it, I'll look for that 17.415. If we get above that, I'll look for the 17,550 Friday highs. Those are my three short spots today, right? These three right here. One, two, and three. Three short spots that I'll be looking for. And, of course, if we do fade one of those levels, we just watch to see what happens at some of our short-term demands. 17,230, 17,2, and then you can move this up to exactly Friday's lows, right around that 17,113. Of course, we'll be careful of previous day lows there at 17,113. All right? That's that. QQQ. Very clear 418 level this morning. Very clear 418 level this morning and the level that is rejecting uh, in the pre-market. You can see right here, 418, 418, Friday rejections at 418, and look at the pre-market right here. So if the QQQ is under 418, Right, I like that short entry there today. I'll be watching for the fade off 418 today. This is your high here before a little gap up. This is your rejection here on Friday. Look at how 418 rejected on Friday right there for another leg lower. That's very nice. And we can see it right here in the pre-market. That 418 is keeping this QQQ lower. So I'll be watching 418 as a potential fade spot today for potential downside. Now, the support that you have to be careful of here in the short term is 416, right? You can see you have 416. You have a little 416 hold here, a little 416 hold in the pre-market. So we need to be careful of 416 holding on. If we get under 416 today on a little break and retest, that's another short entry that I would look for for a move into the Friday lows, into 413. So I have 418. I have support at 416. And then I have that Friday low at 413. Okay, if we get over 418 today, um, I'm sort of looking at two levels. Number one, it's like this 420, right? I'll be watching this 420 here. I'm going to put a line here, right? So you can see we have this 420, 420 rejection. I'll look to see if that's a level up at that 420. And then if we get above 420, you're back into the 100 SMA, which could be the best spot to look short if we do get an extended upside move. That is the Friday high, and that is the 100 SMA at 423, right here, right? That's very nice up there. So I got 420, I got 423, 100 SMA, and then I got 418. Um, if we get above 418, we move the 420. If we get above 420, we move the 423, right? So be careful of 
that's you know that potential is still there for that sort of intraday grind right that intraday grind is still possible so we need to be careful of that downside demand short term 416 if we get under 416 i think weakness is very strong uh and you move down to 413 okay um yeah that's about it for the cues 4010 yeah we're almost back to that 4010 huh Take one more look at this, make sure everything looks right. 418, 420, 100 SMA, 423, demand down at 416, yep, and then demand at 413. That looks about right to me. Okay, so that's the QQQ. I think we can go back to that four hour chart and we can see some of these levels, right? That 413 level, why, why, that, why do I think there could be a hold at that 413? Well, you can see right here, guys, right? We got to go back to that four hour chart. If we go back to that four hour chart, you can see right here that 413 high. That's the level that held on Friday. And then I'm thinking, like, yeah, like this 4010. 410, you guys remember 4010? That would be your next downside demand under 413. So if we go to the 30 minute chart again, right, if we do break under that 413, I think your target would be that 410, right? 418. Some support here at 416. Big 413 demand under that 410. All right. All right. ES. So the spot that I would really like to short today is 5055 on the ES right here. This would be a dream entry if we can get back to it today. 5055. You can see this is Wednesday's lows. That's that Thursday rejection point. That is the perfect Friday rejection point. And if we can sort of grind higher today into that 50-55, that could be a really interesting spot to look for that trend break and that downside continuation. So I will definitely be watching the 50-55 today on the ES. That is very interesting. Above 50-55, you got the 50-80. So these are definitely two spots that I would look for the bounces and the fades. 50-55, 50-80 on the ES. I'm a little bit cautious today, right? Early morning. What I'm going to have to watch very closely this morning before getting too aggressive to the short side is this 100 SMA on the ES. This is slightly concerning for the downside continuation early on today, right? Sort of early morning. I'm a little bit cautious of these holds around this 50-20 and this 100 SMA. This could be a short-term hold level that continues the grind higher, right? If you hold here at the 100, you could get that sort of continuation grind higher, which would set up our 50-55 rejection point, right? So be a little bit cautious here early morning of this 100 SMA on the ES. It's a very possible little hold level short-term, right? 100 SMA is a big level for the ES. You're sitting right above it right now. If that thing wants to maintain, if you start to see some wicks at that level, you might get a little bit more upside today. And that would be the upside move that we're looking for into our major supply at 50.55. So that could be something that you see today, right? A little bit more morning grind, maybe 10, 10.30, 11 o'clock, you're grinding into this level, and then you start to see some of that drama step in at that 55. That could be your sort of short watch today, Okay. Um, if you do break under that 100 SMA without much, without much battle, right? And that thing just sort of breaks under, I would say your next level to watch is 5,000, just 5,000 flat. That's a nice psych level to watch. You can see 5,000 held here, uh, on Friday and this morning at this 5,000. So that's your next level down low. And then below that, it's your 4970. Okay. So I think... ES very clear here. This is a extremely clear level at 5055. If you can get up to that level today, that's where I'd really start to target that potential fade move at 5055. Be aware of the 100 SMA, be aware of the 5000 psychological level and be aware of that Friday low at 4970. Okay? Spy. Spy is actually at that level. Oh no, it's not there yet. That level, that 50-55 level on the ES is what on the SPY? It's 500, right? Beautiful little 500 level, psychological level and major rejection point. Previous low, previous low, Thursday rejection, Friday high, 
That is beautiful right there. So that could be your really nice entry today, guys. All right? If we do get a little bit more grind today, don't be, you know, don't don't get taken out too early, right? If this thing wants to grind a little bit more, let it grind. Let it grind into 500. All right? That 500 might be the spot you want today. That looks really clean. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Beautiful rejection on Friday right at that level. Look for that 500 level today if we do have a little bit more grind to the upside. Okay? The level that would cause us not to get up to that 500 would be right here. It's this 498.50. It's possible that we just can't get over 498.50. That is this Thursday low, right, before our Thursday after our downside extravaganza. That was our 498.50. And that was, look at this rejection intraday on the ES or on the SPY at 498.50. Look at how clean, 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 clean that was right there, Friday intraday right? That was your second leg lower. You got your morning leg lower, your pop, 498.50, bam, right? So that could be the level that we just can't get above to, you know, and we wouldn't be able to get that 500 short opportunity. So be aware of that, 498.50, definitely a big level there. If you do get above that, you'll move into your 500, right? So do not short above 498.50 today, and if you're not at 500, right, this is not a zone to short. If you get above 498.50, you got to wait for us to get to 500. That's your only next entry point. So 498.50, 500, very clear levels there. Um, could be a little bit of a trend break day, right? Keep an eye on this trend right here on the spot, okay? If you start breaking this trend, this could be sort of your spot to, to scalp this short, right? Right now, you are holding this little uptrend here in the pre-market. Right, right, right around there. That's that Friday pre-market. That's Thursday after our low. That's that Friday low. And you can see we're still holding that sort of uptrending move. Okay? So watch this 498.50. Watch this 500. Right? Let these things pop into these levels and see if they fade. If you get under, it's like 496, I believe. That's where it really could start to get aggressive. Right? Like right in here, 496. You can see that's that little after hour low that has been put in. Let me zoom in here for you. So you can see right here, this 496, 496, right? Could be a little bit of a bounce off that level to be aware of. If you get under 496, then you're going to that low at 494, okay? So those are your levels on SPY. Very clear, 498.50, a little bit of 496 potential hold short term, 494 lows, and then of course our 500 above. Those are the levels that I would be watching today on the spot. What's the Russell up to? Okay, so the Russell is still holding above that 200 SMA. That's something to be paying attention to. You can see the Russell has sort of on Friday sort of reclaimed that 200. So that's very clear. We're watching that that Russell 200 SMA at 1960. So keep, keep an eye on that watch. That's a big watch there. And then on the Dow Jones, nice recovery so far on the Dow. Uh, Dow is back over your 38,300. So be careful of that 38,300 level holding on today. 38,300 looks like a potential hold level. So be aware of that. That is some previous highs right here that you are holding above right now. So 38,300 on the Dow. Keep an eye on that level. Um, if the Dow does move higher, I'd say two levels to watch, 100 SMA. And then, of course, this 38,800 right here. So you watch the 100, you watch 38,800. That's if we hold over 38,3. If you fail back under 38,3, that could be a nice short opportunity. If you fail back under 38,300. All right. That's the futures for now. We'll take another quick peek at it. You know, after this, when we're ending the stream, you can see the ES definitely is defending, right? For now, at least, it, you can see the defense at that ES 100 SMA. All right, this is big today. Be careful shorting into this ES100 SMA. That's a potential hold level. So we need to be aware of that. All right. Let's go to some stocks. If you guys could press that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Thank you guys for the 80,000 subs, man. That's crazy. We're almost there. 20,000 more. 20,000 more. All right. Tesla. Ouch. <laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch. Um, I do not see much support here on Tesla um, at its current levels. 
I really don't see much support on Tesla until 120, if I was to be fully honest. Uh, if I go to the daily chart, let me go to the daily chart and get some more time here. I don't see much support on Tesla until this little 120 area right here. And then really 100. Those are really your next two major levels. Uh, 120 and 100. 100 is this major low from here, right? 100 and 120. So I don't see why Tesla would hold up anywhere uh above those levels in its current trend, guys. I don't see why Tesla would hold up at any point before this 120 at this point. So how do you trade this, right? How do you trade this? You look for pops and fades, right? That's what it's done the last, you know, entire last week. It's done pops and it's done fades. Every pop is a short opportunity. Look at how clean you get a pop, fade, pop, fade, right? Pop, Friday morning, fade. So what are you looking for on Tesla? Ideally, you want this, right? You really, really want a fake pop into 146. If you guys can see a fake pop in the 146 into these lows, man, I would be very aggressive on that short if you can get it. The problem here with Tesla is I don't like shorting into pre-market downside right where has the where where did those really sexy shorts come in on tesla they came in on pre market upside right pre market upside pre market upside is great for reshort entries so friday pre market we were up all morning which created a sexual opportunity to the downside um i don't really like shorting tesla after being down $7 a share already in the pre market that's tough for me that's something that would turn me off i'm not interested in it what I would look for, not what I'd wait for, is either today, tomorrow, maybe after earnings. Uh, do we get a little, or hopefully before earnings. I don't really want to, eh, it has earnings, what, tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? Yeah, so you might not get much on it today. But if we can get some kind of a pop in the 146 today, if you can get one of those Tesla squeezes that everyone just starts to think Tesla's going higher, right? Um and it, you know, get get those people thinking Tesla's going higher. And if it's under 146, guys, make sure you remember the larger larger term picture, right? This is where you get caught up, right? You look at Tesla on the one minute chart. You know, you're seeing Tesla going straight up. You're like, holy shit, Tesla's going up. I need to long this thing. And then it goes right into that supply, and that's the short that you should be taking, right? So what you're hoping for today on Tesla is that squeeze action to the upside really early morning really aggressive right you want this thing to look like it's going to fly higher that's what you want if you're looking to short you want that move to look like it's flying higher you know people are going to get interested in the longs um it might be 147 it could be 147 but i'll look at both levels 147 and 146 um but that's really what you're looking for, right? You're looking for that, okay, you know, oh, here we go, right? Tesla's going higher. And then you're looking for it to push right into those rejection points. So that's what I would continue to look for on Tesla. Um, look for those pops and fades. They have been great opportunities, and I think they will continue to be great opportunities. Of course, uh, Tesla's earnings is in, a, in the way, right? Um, so we'll see what happens there. But for now, let's look for that bounce before we look for any shorts, guys. Let's look for that bounce. Hopefully we get it. If we don't, <laughs> if we don't get it where you can get a little bit more aggressive, I will say, if you want to be real aggressive on it, right, you can look for some of these like pre-market highs, right, right in here. See this little action right here? You can look for, let's say, uh, like this 142.40 level, right? You can look for something right here. Uh, you can look for a little something right here at this pre-market high, 144. Right, you can look for that action too if you want to get really aggressive on it. Um, but man, this thing looks dead. This thing looks dead. All right, Nvidia. So Nvidia seven seventy, a very important level here. Uh, let me show you why. If I go to the four hour chart, seven seventy is this four hour low. Right, look at this four hour low here at seven seventy on Nvidia. This is a four-hour low that created a bull flag that really created 
the next, you know, the largest leg higher on NVIDIA, right? 770 is where the juice was squeezed to the upside. You guys remember this move in March, right? This huge move in March. That huge move in March occurred because we held 770. It was all because of 770, right? That is why NVIDIA went higher and flagged higher, right? Because we had a break and hold above 770. So now today, we are looking at NVIDIA at 770, right? And so what I would be looking at today is, do we reject this 770? Does this level turn into a rejection today? And if it does, this could be a very interesting short entry today. So I would be eyes glued to 770 today. Get an idea of what NVIDIA wants to do here. If NVIDIA does hold it and maintain it, we could get that sort of pop back into 800, which could be our next entry short. But if we start to see 770 reject, guys, uh, that is definitely a reason to be looking for short side. I would say possibly down into 755, and I would say more likely down into 740. Uh, 740 is where I think you should come down to here uh, in the short term. I think the, mar the I think Nvidia will want to test this triple top. You guys see that triple top on the four hour? That's where I think Nvidia wants to come down to 740. Right? That's probably where it gets a little bit more action, a little bit more buyers, and maybe holds up more in the short term, is here at 740. So that would sort of be my target on the downside if you do look for some shorts today, 740. Um, but we need to be very focused on this 770. If we do hold above it, you got to be careful shorting here, guys. Be careful shorting NVIDIA above 770. It could be a hold level. Uh, it could be a short-term hold level that pushes us back into 800. Um, we go to the four hour chart. Y800, right? Y800, right here. 800, 800. If we do get that push today into 800, that could be your bear flag short, right? As stocks move lower, guys, this is what stocks do when they move lower, right? Remember this. They move lower, they have little bear flags higher, then they, they drop again. Bear flags higher, right? Drop again. This is how stocks move lower, okay? Stocks do not move lower like this. They move lower like this, right? This is good. This is not good. You do not want to trade this. You want to trade this, okay? You want to look for those little fake moves higher, that next bear flag short entry, next bear flag short entry, right? That's where, that's how you want to look for stocks to move lower. Because this right here sets up your short, right? This right here sets up your short. Those bear flags lower or higher, set up your short okay so that is what could happen here on nvidia right if we can get this little grind higher into 800 this could be your next sexy short entry so your eyes guys this week more than anything you need to be focused on this because like upside today is actually one of the most bearish things you could look for today okay upside today that doesn't really go anywhere that just sort of does this little fake move higher right? If today is just this little slow, shitty upside grind, right? That is actually the bear case for the market, okay? If you go straight down again today, that's concerning for downside because if we overextend to the downside, you're probably going to get one of these knee-jerk rubber band reaction moves back to the upside. What you actually want to see in this market, if you want to short, is shitty grinds higher into supply levels, that is exactly what you want. You do not want this to go straight down. If this goes straight down, you're going to see straight back up, and that's going to be dangerous because someone's going to short the bottom. I can guarantee you that, all right? And you're going to get sort of smacked in the face. So what I'd really like to see today is some of those sort of shitty grinds, right, so that we can look for re-entry shorts. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. Hopefully we get that, you know, sort of back in the 800. If we get that back in the 800, I'd be very interested. Uh, AMD. So I'm looking for the shitty grind at the 151, right? That's going to be our new term, the shitty grind. Um, I want the shitty grind into 151 right here on AMD. This double top high on the four hour chart, I would like that little grind higher into 151 and then that reshort entry, right? That's exactly what I'll be looking for on AMD. 
That's a major four hour double top high that we have fallen back below. Okay, so if we sort of grind higher into that 151 today, I would look to see if that becomes another entry. Okay, 151. Keep an eye on that on AMD. MU. This one is interesting. I actually have a position on MU, uh, and I'm looking for the gap fill. So this is something I'm definitely watching here. If we go to the four-hour chart, we can see right here, guys, uh, that is a that is an island, okay? This is an MU island, not Epstein Island, MU island. I'm probably going to get banned for that. I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> 107, you guys can see right here. You have a very clear island, right? You have traded on an island on MU above 107. And below 107, you have nothing, right? Nothing until 98. You, I had this level, so this is something I will be watching around that 102. You could see a little bit of hold at 102, right, at that 50 SMA. So 102, possible hold level to be aware of. But there is definitely a gap here on MU. Under 107 into 98, okay? Under 107 into 98. So definitely looking for that MU gap fill. This is 100% something I'll be focused on this week, like very focused on, um, because I don't want to miss this opportunity. Uh, I think this is an opportunity that could be very, very uh, lucrative, right? So I'm going to be watching, right? Do we get stuck? Do we try to get back under this 107 here? As of right now, we are holding that 107 a little bit. Uh, but if we can get under that 107 today, I will definitely be looking for this gap fill move. The gap fill move is down into 98. Uh, you have some support at, at 102. So be careful of 102. Be careful of 98. Um, I would prefer if MU stayed under 109. See this right here? 109, 109. I would like to see MU stay below 109 and stay weak here, right? Let, let MU sort of grind higher into 109. And then see if this can gap fill, if that gap fill can start. So let's see. Definitely watching this one. Um, arm, guys, it's pretty much over. I don't think I'd short arm much more here, guys. Arm into into 80 is is about where I think the slowing stops or the selling stops. You can see right here, this $80 level. You might be able to catch a little bit more downside, but most of this meat is gone. Uh, under 120 was just a thing of beauty. What a dream. Uh, under 120 on arm that was so congratulations to you guys that caught this downside on arm i'd say be careful still shorting into 80 if you can get under 80 then then i'd look for the continuation smci all right so smci selling does not need to be over i just want to let everyone be very clear of that um it does not need to be over even with that 20 percent downside guys this is the weekly chart we should not be surprised to see what happened on SMCI. We talked about this all in the beginning of this year. Beginning of this year, March, we we all knew the weekly chart is what the weekly chart was, right? There's not a single trader out there that didn't look at the weekly chart and say, damn, this is going to be good downside. So it happened, right? It's exactly, those are the opportunities you look for, right? What a beautiful opportunity the market presented to both directions, right? Beautiful straight up. Weekly chart straight up, and you are going to potentially come straight back down. Um, markets do not go straight up. It's just not how it works. So this is a in crazy weekly chart, a crazy, crazy weekly candle last week. The big level here, and I think the last level that could hold SMCI before maybe another meltdown is this 690 level. So let me go ahead and show you why 690. I'm going to zoom in here on the daily chart. I'm going to take some of these lines off for now just to try to clean this up for you. But I do need to keep some of them because they are important. What I'll do is I'll change my drawing set here. Actually, wow, I already had it on here. I didn't even realize that. So the low of this day is 692.50. Oh, landscaper's out early today <laughs> on a Monday morning. Um, 692.50. You guys can see right here. If you break that, I think you're going to get more leg lower. All right, I think that's very important. The 692.50 level right here. So that's a big watch. Okay, that's my first big watch of the day. 692.50. If I go down to the 15 minute chart, that's going to get annoying. 
that's really going to get annoying. Um, you can see right now that the MU, or I'm sorry, SMCI is holding that level, 692.50. That is where SMCI is holding right now. Okay, so that's a big watch, 692.50, big watch. That's a hold level that could come in on SMCI. Be careful shorting into that level. I would want to get under that level, and if we do, I'd look for shorts into the 100, shorts into the 630. I'd look for continuation of downside if you got under 692.50, all right? Big watch there. If you bounce, look for 750. So 750, 692.50. Those are the two levels that I would be watching today. You can't hear it? Okay, good. Let me close my door. Hold on. All right, hopefully a little bit better. So 692.50, 750, 100 SMA below. That 692.50, once again, I'll go back to my drawing, other drawing set. I think that is a crucial, 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 crucial hold. If you look at this four-hour chart, look at this four-hour chart on SMCI. Under that level, there is pretty much nothing of structure. It's just straight up. So that could be big. Let's keep an eye on that. TSM. So big trend break on TSM, monster trend break on TSM. You see this trend that was holding on TSM? Big break of that trend, big time. Now, 126, right? 126 is where I think you need to hold. If you fail 126, I think you could come down into that 100 SMA. You could come down into that 118. So 126 is going to be, I think, the level to watch today on TSM right there. All right? So keep an eye on that 126. Looks like upside rejections are pretty clear at this 129. I think this is something you can watch right here. All right, look at this, 129. Let's turn that red. Bam, 129. You have rejection, rejection, previous support. So that could be a very nice fade level. If we do pop, right, if we get that sort of grind back in the 129, I'd look for that fade there. Under 126, though, if we go back to this four-hour chart, I think is a very important break. 126, 126. Under that, I think your support really comes in down at 118. So big watch, 126, TSM. All right. Now, I want to get into some stocks that have big gaps, BMGs, big money gaps. Uh, we have three of them. We have Meta. We have Netflix. Or was it two? Yeah, I mean, MU is the other one. I already went over it. We have Meta, Netflix, and MU. I'm going to look at now Meta and Netflix. I'm going to show you guys some interesting things that could occur. The problem here with Meta is there is earnings, okay? Earnings is this week. So this is the problem with looking for Metas. This is the one. This is the reason I'd be a little bit less interested here. But here is something to be watching. This is Meta, okay? And so since Meta's previous earnings, you had a major gap up, right? You have this major gap up on Meta under 450 at the 400 level. 400 to 450 was a major gap up on the previous Meta earnings, okay? Since that earnings, you pretty much just grinded higher here very slowly to the upside. On Friday, you broke that trend, okay? You have invalidated the post-earnings sort of grind higher on Meta. Big, uh, big break. There on Friday. Okay? Now, we have to know that that's there. That's, that, that gap starts at 450, right around 450, 453. I would call it, I'd probably just call it 450, right, just to be safe. 450, under that, you have nothing, right? It's, it's, it's a nothing move. There's nothing under 450. Straight from 450 to 400. For now, Meta is holding 475, and Meta is still a very strong stock, so we need to be aware of that. So for now, it's not a trade, right? 475 still holding. You can see that that previous low is still maintaining, previous highs, previous low, definitely maintaining here in the pre-market and even after Friday's downside. So I would not look to play this trade unless we got under 475, right? If we got under 475, right, then I would look to see if there is a downside continuation, okay? Something that I would be looking for. 
if we got under 475, I'd look to see if there's downside into 450. Under 450, I would absolutely look for that gap. We'll have to see how this develops. We'll have to see how earnings comes out, right? From this point to the gap fill is about a 17%. Um, that's a big move. So right now, I really don't have much for you because it hasn't validated the idea yet because it's still over 475. But I would say, guys, if you can see Meta under 475, then this might start to hit, right? It might start to lose that steam and that gap fill could be coming, all right? So I'd say keep eyes on Meta 475. This would be a big watch here pretty much over the next few weeks. Netflix, this is another one with some big gaps. And you can see right here, look at this on Netflix. Netflix did the exact same thing as Meta, right? This is verbatim the same chart as Meta. You can see gap up on earnings since the gap up grind higher right and then friday big break obviously on earnings too earnings was really the big break but earnings breakdown friday continuation right into i'm gonna call it 550 being the level that needs to hold so if we look at this four hour chart you have 550 right and you have that 100 sma right you have 550 and you have that 100 SMA. If Netflix gets stuck under 550 in the 100 SMA, you might be game for your gap fill move to 500. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. So I'd keep an eye on this. 550. 550 point gap here on Netflix. Watch 550. Watch the 100 SMA. Something to be monitoring here, guys. I'm not saying you just go out and start shorting the shit out of this stock. That's not what I'm saying. You could still get pops higher. You could get sort of gap fill on earnings still, right? This could be the move, right? You could still move higher for the next few weeks to fill that earnings gap down. Very possible. But I would say if you start to see weakness under 550, this could get interesting, all right? So keep an eye on that. All right, let's jump into the futures real quick, see what's going on here. It's 850. We got to run soon. Looks like futures are maintaining themselves. So uh yeah it's not set in stone where we get this rejection yet you can see the futures are still maintaining themselves so let me zoom in here on the five minute chart you can see nasdaq still under that i like this level here too i'm gonna put this here actually i might just leave this here i might get rid of the 17.3 i think i like this level a little bit more here you see this? Low, flip low, and then high. Yeah, that's a nice level right there. 17,350 on the NASDAQ futures is a very important flip level on Friday. See this? Hold early morning, break and retest rejection, 350. Failure later day, 350. So that's going to be my lo level to watch here on the NASDAQ futures. 350, 415. Keeping an eye on those levels today. ES, still holding that 100, guys. This could be something you look at today to protect yourself. Say to yourself, hey, is the ES above the 100? And if the answer to that is yes, right? If the answer to that is yes, if yes, then no short, right? That could be something you, you protect yourself with today. If that ES is above that 100 SMA, you might want to be careful shorting this market, right? Until we get into a supply level, of course. So be careful of that ES 100. SPY, let me go the hell why does this look like this spy you can see right here what is this wrong oh it's because i don't have the pre-market jesus that that was a, i got tripped out there for a second it's like what's going on in the spy um spy you can see right here sort of fading higher into our 498.50 that's our level 498.50 500 and then qqq 418 which i actually think might be four nineteen four eighteen seventy five. It's right here. Let me show you why I'm focused on this level today, guys. I want to show you this because this is important. The reason I'm sort of adjusting this QQQ level right now is because I'm focused on this right here. See this intraday on Friday? See like this 418.80 area? This is why I'm adjusting this. So you can see, right, 418.80, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50, 418.50
flip short, right? Look at how clean this is. See that? And then look at where it rejected later day on Friday. So this, I think, is actually the level you want to watch. This 418.80 on the QQQ is actually the level I think I'd want to be watching. That looks like a very important flip level on Friday. And if we get into that, I would watch that level. So 418.80 is my QQQ more important level there. I think that's the level I want to watch. 418.80. And then on the NASDAQ futures, it's that 17.350. All right? All right, guys. Hope you have a fantastic trading day. Be safe out there. It is Monday morning, so give the market some time to, to digest, right? Give it some time to digest. Uh, see what the action looks like. Obviously, it's not going to, you know, we got to make sure we don't have that, that idea of Friday, right? That's the thing I said in the beginning of the stream. Be careful coming into today with that same idea as Friday, right? Friday was straight down. Are we going to go straight down again? Um, maybe, but be careful with that mindset, right? Don't come into today hoping and praying for a Friday type move, right? If you missed Friday, there's going to be a lot of traders that are going to hope that that's what today looks like. And that could be dangerous, okay? So careful out there. Press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.